Howdy and welcome to a standalone tutorial about making a particle system using Bevy. I have currently added this to my personal game to give my furnace a nice fire effect and add stars to my background. I think particles are a quick and easy way to add polish to any game and they are very easy to create using Bevy's ECS systems. This tutorial is inspired by a video by the Cherno where he makes a particle system in one hour. Most of what I'm doing here is porting his techniques and the rest in Bevy. Thankfully, we already have a 1-up on him because since Bevy 0.6 we have automatic sprite batching, which is a performance improvement point he mentions in the video. I also should point out the Bevy Hanabi plugin, which does particle systems using a GPU-based technique. If you want an out-of-the-box solution or need more performance, I highly recommend checking out this plugin. One note that made me reject this for my game is they don't currently support custom particle lifetimes, but I'm sure they're open to contributions if anyone wants to solve that. To get started, I'm going to use a template I've made for Bevy tutorials. You can find it linked in the description of this video, and you can use Cargo Generate to get a simple Bevy starting point. This gives us the standard Bevy project with the eGUI debugger on a toggle and a normalized 2D camera. First, let's create three components, one for the particle size, one for color, and one for the particle's velocity. We want start and end values for these, and we'll work between them as the particle ages. Now we can make a particle spawner component which will have a rate saying how often particles will spawn and an amount per burst for how many particles to spawn each time the rate passes. We will give it our components we just made as optional values, and we can also add a value for variance on where the particle will spawn and a value for the particle's lifetime. Finally, we need a timer to track when the next particle should spawn. Next we need one final component to handle the particles. This component will only have a timer tracking the particle's lifetime. Now we can create an emit system. Here we need commands to spawn our particles and a query for all our particle spawners. We also need time to tick the spawner timer. For each spawner, we need to tick their timer and if it just finished, we'll spawn the burst number of particles. Our particles are going to be based off a sprite bundle for this tutorial, but you could easily use a texture atlas sprite if you wanted. You can even port this to 3D using meshes or quads instead of sprites. Thankfully, Bevy has a default texture which is a 1x1 white pixel, and we'll use that for this tutorial. I've linked my personal game's GitHub in the description where I load particle graphics from a PNG if you want to see that. Now we just add the components to the particle if they are present in the spawner, and we'll set the sprite components to their start values. It's important to set the start values here so we don't get one frame of the 1x1 pixel before the settings apply. We can use the rand crate to get a random number between 0 and 1, and we'll use that to offset the position by the position variance. You can also do this with any of the particle settings by modifying the component values before adding them to the particle. Finally, we'll insert the bundle and add the particle as a child of the spawner. Now if we add a quick system to create the particle spawner and run the game, we'll see some nice white squares appearing randomly around the scene periodically. Next we need to update the particles. Here we have some options as to what we want to do, but the most easiest approach would be to have separate systems for each particle component. The approach I use in my personal game, however, is to use optional query parameters, so this comes down to a performance question, and I recommend profiling both options if you find this important in your games. Let's update the lifetimes first. Here we just need the query for the entity and the particle component. We also need time to take the timer, and we need commands to despawn the particles. Next we update the positions. Here we need to query for the particles, their velocities, and their transforms. We also need time to apply velocity in a frame rate independent way. To update the velocities, we want to warp between the start and end values, so I made a simple warp function. If you want to use more curves, you can probably adapt this system to use bevy tweening, which will give you many ways to interpolate between values for your particles. Next we can update the size, so we query for the particles, the size, and the sprite component. We use the same technique, and I hope you can see how we can add other components to modify particles if you need more complexity. Finally, we'll handle color in the exact same way. Now you can see how easy it is to create many different effects using the system. One tiny pain point for me is that every time we change the particle system description, we need to recompile the game. The way I fix this is by loading the particle settings from a ROM file. If you want an even more sophisticated system, you can probably get hot asset reloading using Bevy's custom asset loading mechanisms, but for me this is good enough. First, let's derive the serialize for the particle spawner. Unfortunately, we can't deserialize timers, so let's move that to a separate component as a workaround. We also need to add the serialize to all our particle components. Now we need to add the new timer component to our spawner query and make a small change to the system. 
Finally, let's create the particle spawner settings in the asset folder. Now we can simply load the file and use the ron create to create the particle spawner. Now we can create the timer from the rate and change our spawning to use the loaded component. Finally, when we play the game now, we can change the settings of the spawner without needing to recompile the game every time. This looks good and is very usable for small games, but there's one subtle bug. If we look in the inspector, we see that the children of the spawner still hold the particles even after we despawn them. This means that the vector of children is growing without bounds and is a memory leak. You can also verify this by printing the length of the children component on the spawner. The easiest fix for this is to implement basic object pooling, where instead of spawning and despawning particles each time, we'll spawn them all at once and then only change the settings and visibility of the particles when we need to emit a new one. Let's create a spawn particle helper function and we can move the spawning code from the emit system here. We also want to set the default visibility to false so we don't see the particles when they spawn. Now we can spawn all the particles when we create the spawner and add them as children to it here. We can pre-calculate the max particles we'll ever have active by taking the lifetime over the rate and multiplying by the amount per burst. We add an extra 10% buffer to handle any slight changes in system ordering and time between frames. Now instead of despawning the particles, we'll just set their visibility to false. Next on emit, we need to find a particle that is invisible, so we'll need the children of the spawner and a query for the particle transform invisibility. Then when we need to emit, we'll just search for an invisible particle, reset its settings, and then break. Finally, let's add some ordering so all the updating happens after emitting the particles. This will force all settings to be correct on the next frame. This method has one quirk where the layering of sprites cycles periodically, but you can fix this if it's important to your use by moving particles slightly forward or backwards in the z-direction as they age. There are plenty of options left open to expand this for your own games, such as rotation, spawning patterns, and loading the sprite graphic from an asset. You can see my usage of this in the devlog game which is linked in the description, where I've added a couple of features specific to my needs. The final code for this video is also linked in the description. Overall, I hope this was helpful and it's an easy way to quickly add polish to any bevy games you release. Anyone is free to bundle this into a crate and release it if you want, but I would once again recommend checking out Bevy Hanabi, which uses more sophisticated rendering techniques and is very feature-rich already. Going forward, next week I'll release the first in a multi-part series on shaders in Bevy, and after that I'll start covering different physics implementations. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave them in the comments or on my Discord server. Please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.